I've unmuted everyone. Does anyone have a question? There would like to ask. Question, Stuart. Um, Rudy talks about not letting the atmosphere touch the energy when it's coming in, the way uh, sperm fertilizes an egg, but if it touches the atmosphere, you know, it's not possible anymore. Can you speak to the difference between, uh, you know, not not interfering and, and interfering for some clarity around that? Well, you know, uh, you should keep the vibration uh, where you do meditation, you should keep it on a very high level. You know, I mean, it's really important. Um, I mean, I see you have a picture of Rudy back there and Nichananda. And, I mean, it's all very important to keep the vibration high, keep it refined. Don't let it be corrupted by uh, a lot of crap that goes on in the world. That helps the energy to flow into you in a much deeper way. It's not going to be obstructed by, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know. So I, it's important. It's important. I mean, I have, uh, you, you know, I, you can't see what I have around me here, but it's, uh, I'm talking about, uh, you know, Hindu and Buddhist cultures and, you know, every one of them was made for worship. And I've been doing this all my life you know, uh, surrounding myself with things of that nature to keep the energy refined. When I get a, you know, a place to finally settle down again, I'm going to have a, you know, a, like a meditation room and a temple and a, you know, and a very refined energy in it. I mean, it's really important. You know, it's not a place to sit around and drink alcohol, you know, where you're meditating. It's not a place to, for parties that have people that come into that have a lot of tension and have no consciousness. It's really important to refine your surroundings as best you can. And frankly, when you really open inside, this just happens organically. It really happens organically. Uh, because what's emanating from you is this spiritual force and it attracts that type of environment. It wants to exist in that kind of, and then when you walk out of the house, you know, you have the strength to not get swept away in all the, well, for a better word, all the craziness that goes on in life. You have that inner quiet, that inner strength, that foundation in yourself that allows you to detach from it. You don't, I mean, you can sit and watch the news and not get swept away in all the craziness that they report on television, you know? You can go to the grocery store, this and that, you know, and the prices are higher and you can't find what you're looking for. And you, you know, you don't, get, you don't get caught up in it. You don't allow it to waste your energy. And then when you come home and you have a meditation room and a place that you sit and work on yourself, there's a level of refinement there. And it really emanates from your own heart, you know? It really does to have that kind of energy around you. I mean, even before I went to live in Rudy's house, I used to be a client of his, you know? I would go and buy art from him and he always gave me these ridiculously cheap prices, you know? Because then it was a different world then. And I would, you know, I had a bed that a futon on the floor, surrounded by a 17th century Japanese screen of monks, <laughs> Buddhas, and you know, it was just my energy reached out for that. It was hungry to surround myself with things that were a constant reminder of spirituality, especially where I lived. You know, it's why I built that house in Denton, you know, that wonderful, it's like a Chinese, Japanese, you know, Tibetan temple, because I wanted the energy to be really refined that way where we lived. Something extraordinary like that. So yes, yes, you know, your surroundings where you meditate can interfere with the meditation. 
if you're, you know, if people are, you know, bring a lot of unconscious stuff there, if we bring a lot of unconscious stuff there, does does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Yes, uh, Stuart, I have a question. Yes. I think this uh, leads into what you were just talking about. Um, Rudy had said something about, <clears throat> excuse me, completely surrendering during an exercise that you're either on the earth or not on the earth. Any halfway in between will create problems that the best work was done on the second dimension and left there. Nothing should be brought back after an exercise. You talk about that? That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, you just did. Yes, I mean, I uh, look. I don't know, Tony. I really don't know. Uh, you know, we. Ha you know, to me, we live on the earth. Okay, I talk about this all the time, and every human being is a point in a triangle that connects the second, third, fifth, tenth dimension. Mm. With, you know, them living on the earth and life on the earth. We are that point in the triangle that connects the two. And we're here to work out both elements. We're here to draw upon the spiritual force to give us the consciousness to work out our karma in the world. So I don't know how you separate the two. And I never heard in all the years I was with Rudy him ever talk like that. You know, I mean, we, we really have to learn how to do both. It's not like we sit and meditate in order to go into some second dimension and we don't bring anything back with us. We need that energy. How else are we going to deal with life? How else are we going to work out our karma? So, you know, in six years of being around Rudy, I never heard him mention anything of that nature. It's in his book. <laughs> well, okay, but I, you know, I, I hate to, you know, talk, you know, I mean, look, uh, I think it's essential. Otherwise, people get spaced out. They wind up, you know, living on, in the cosmos somewhere and, and not drawing that energy to work out there. And working out your karma, connecting with spirit, ultimately allows the soul to free itself from the earth. You have the inner strength that you can free yourself from the earth. But if you don't have that inner strength, uh, you know, you know I, I don't know how you do it. I frankly don't know how you do it. Maybe it's my lack of growth that doesn't understand that, but I don't understand that. Or know how a human being can do it unless they build that point in the triangle that connects them with God and it gives them the capacity to see God in the world and work out their karma and when you do both of these things, you really free yourself. You have taken care of your responsibilities in the world. Mm. So I don't know about Rudy's teachings like that. I never heard them in all the years I was with him. You know, it might be in his book. I don't know. I read his book a long, long time ago. I don't remember. But, you know, look, uh, you know, we all have to find a path. And, and I don't know how this works unless we get strong enough to be able to deal with our karma in the world. At the same time, to be connected to spirit. Each and every one of us is that point in a triangle. And we fix ourselves, you know, and free ourselves by developing that point in the triangle, opening the heart, quieting the mind, receiving God's wisdom, living with God's wisdom in the world, we become enlightened people and we become one with higher energy in the universe because in doing that, there is no separation between life and spirit. It's all the same thing. It's all one. It's one energy. So I don't know, Tony, you know, uh, 
If you read that in Rudy's book, then you just interpret it for yourself because yeah. this is the interpretation yeah. of what that's all about, you know? Yeah, I couldn't grasp it, but I think we have to do our own work. That's what it comes down to. We have to do our work. Okay. Good. <laughs> so I keep saying it all the time. Ultimately, you know, we all have to build a unique connection with God. That's really what this is about. Every, you need the strength inside yourself to do that. To build each and every one of us has a unique connection with God. And we will learn things in many cases differently because that connection is unique with God. Thank you. You're welcome. That's beautiful. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Stuart, I have a question. Yes. It's Bob Talon. Yes, Bob. Um, it's, what is your opinion about what happens in dreams? Is there is there any significance? Are they are they uh, markers of anything? Um, I had a dream. Brian, sit still, please. Larry, please sit sit up and do the meditation. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Bob. I'm sorry. Uh, the question was about was about dreams and uh, if there's if there's any significance to them did they mean anything i had a dream the other night and i saw the, uh, this bright 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 light felt like it was in my forehead and it just get, kept getting bigger and uh i was filled with some sort of great feeling and then i got to be honest i got terrified and kind of just woke up i think but i don't know what it means and what what do you, what do you think? Because you began to think about it. You yeah. Know, if you just open your heart and receive that amazing energy you just described, it would uh -huh. take you to a whole other level in your spiritual development. Instead of trying to understand it and think about it, take it in as energy. Open to it. Receive it. It's God. It's the universe giving you something really powerful. And if it comes in a dream, that's where it comes. But as soon as you start thinking about it and analyzing it and try to bring it down to your level of understanding, it will terrify you. It's too strong. Yeah. I but felt overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed by it. Just open your heart. You won't be overwhelmed. You know, allow it to come in. Allow it to transform you inside. Grow because of it. Don't get overwhelmed. Grow because of it. You know, you get overwhelmed because you try to fit it into your conscious stream and it's not going to fit there, but it will take you to a whole other level in your life. And if it comes through a dream, it's wonderful. You know, it comes to, I mean, I have visions like that in the meditation classes all the time. I don't get overwhelmed. I take in the energy. I let it make me grow. It knows much better than I do what I have to do to grow. And it's just the energy of the universe coming to you, for you to use in the development of your spiritual life. And the second you begin to think about these things and analyze them and, you, you know, figure them out, you destroy the whole experience. You yeah. destroy it. So instead of being overwhelmed, take it in and let it, let that energy nurture you inside and help you to grow. It's an incredible thing you just described. And it's a, a wonderful experience that came to you through a dream. I mean, I never analyzed dreams, you understand? I yeah. used to use them a lot in my writing because you can't analyze them. You know, they're of another dimension. Dreams are another dimension of consciousness. If you try to analyze them according to your understanding, you destroy the entire experience. Same way when spiritual energy comes in, if you try to analyze it according to your level of understanding, you will destroy the experience. As I always say, it's like putting an ocean in a teacup. 
You got to open and let it expand you, you know? And the wonderful thing about God's energy is you will never understand it, ever. It's infinite, it's beyond all human understanding. You never can figure out how it works, where it comes from, it's just there. And you, when you open, you can receive it and it helps expand, develop your chakra system. It helps you to grow. It helps you to really evolve and you know, to other dimensions of consciousness that become part of your life and begin to feed you in your life and you grow, you change. So, you know, don't, you know, if you have it again, or it won't be the exact same thing, but if you have dreams of that nature, just open your heart, open your chakra system, let them come in. Let them really nurture you and so grow because of it, you know? <laughs> and, and you don't want to be intimidated. You know, you just want to get strong. You'll be intimidated if you think about it. Analyze it, try to figure it out. Too strong for me, too powerful for me. I was tell me the same thing about this meditation. They were intimidated, it was too strong for them. Too, you know, it just told me they don't want to open, they don't want to grow. They want somebody to just pat them on the back and say, I'm okay, you're okay. <laughs> Instead of really working and opening and letting this powerful energy that we use in these classes to help you to develop your inner life. I, I feel like I really, uh, you know, I'm always saying even outside of meditation, I want to grow. Uh, uh, I'm wondering if, if that fear is that my, my, I'm not open enough or the, the chakras aren't open, I'm not developed enough. No, it wouldn't be coming to you if you weren't. The fear is that you spend a lot of time in your head. Oh yeah. And you like to analyze things and understand them. And that's where right. it comes from, you know? Okay. That's that makes fear. sense. You know? Stop it. Open. <laughs> Embrace it. Let it, you know, you know, it's not like I want to grow, I want to grow. And then when these energies come, you freak out, you know? Yeah. I want to grow. Oh my God, I'm going to embrace it and take it inside and open to it and let it really nurture me inside. There's nothing to be afraid of. And you'll only be able to absorb what you are ready to absorb. Understand? It's, and that's for everybody, not just Bob. You can absorb only what you're ready to absorb. And, you know, the rest of it will just flow right past you. But at least take whatever you can absorb inside yourself so that you can evolve and grow. I mean, that's an answer to what Tony asked before, you know? Yeah. But that second dimension and all that, take in what you can use in your life and don't worry about the rest of it. Let it, and then when you get stronger, another one comes and you take that in too, whatever you can. Thank you. You're welcome. That helps. Does anyone else have a question? Uh, Stuart? Yes? Are we evolving into something new? We could be doing this. We're just changing to something new? I hope so, Tony. Yeah. Tony is asking that. Who's asking that question? That was Tony, yes. yes. Sorry, I've got to two questions lined up. Sorry. I have to laugh and say, my answer is, I really hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> I hope so, too. I hope so, Tony. You know, the old is boring, sterile. You know, it's stagnant. What do we want to live with the old for? It's just, you know, stagnant energy. It's dead energy. We want to evolve into the new, change. Yeah. Does anyone else? <laughs> 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 
Listen, this is, this has not been an easy month. I don't know about all of you, but I've it's been really a strange month. And I've discovered, you know, that Mercury is in retrograde here, you know, so everything is kind of cockeyed this month. So don't worry about it, you know, it, everything passes, you know, another week and a half, uh, Mercury will be not in retrograde anymore. So just work it open and try to be quiet and simple about the way you live your day and really try to conserve energy. Try not to allow the stupidity of the world to drain your energy out of you. And then, you know, you're able to deal with these things, you know, or the, even astrological things that affect us as human beings. And it's really important that we learn how to deal with not only our own tension, but, you know, astrological things, you know, the stuff that goes on in the world that affects us and can affect us in very strong ways. We need the strength inside to be able to deal with all of it. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, God bless you all. Again, as I say always at the end of classes, thank you and bless you. And, and uh, in all humility, I'm very grateful to be here to do this share my life with all of you, what I've learned with all of you. And I thank people for being here because it really forces me to grow. And that's the only reason I do this. I don't do this because I want students. Honestly, I do this because I have to grow in my life and get closer to God. You know, I've had 20,000 students in my life. The last thing in the world is I have more students. <laughs> but I want people that truly want a spiritual life and are willing to do the work, you know, that they have to do in order to attain that level of consciousness. And I think sitting through these classes has been, for me, is just an amazing, yeah. you know, uh, way to open and to really connect with God and higher energy. So bless you all and thank you. There'll be class tomorrow evening and I'm looking forward to seeing people come, you know. And have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart.